Okay, so now we're on page 86, or in Act 3, Scene 1, uh, the, you know, probably one of the most famous kind of iconic scenes, definitely in the play, it's probably the soliloquy is the most famous because of the wording and because of the, the sound of it. Um, in the quarto, uh, this comes at 2-2, two, two, um, whereas in the folio, this comes at 3-1, and that structurally is worth something to think about. Um, and in class, we can do an exercise about it. And I already invited this idea for you to think about is where do you place the speech and how does it make sense? It is a speech where in um, the Hamlet is contemplating suicide, something he's thought about a lot uh, in, in the play. And what he thinks about is um, the reasons not to do it. Um, and it's just really remarkable, that first line, because it just it's just captured so much of our imagination. But really what I want you to think about, what's it, what, is, what is actually the argument he's making? To be or not to be, that is the question. Is it, is it nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows, the attacks of fortune, chance? The attacks of chance... Or fight, or fight, and by opposing, end them. Okay, fight and end. Should I? Should should we take it, or should we fight back? Uh, and and the, like in our minds, though. So in this anxiety. Uh, and fighting back here presumably would be some kind like suicide. So weirdly, what are we fighting except ourselves? Okay, and this is this speech is incredibly modern and captures a lot of our ideas about depression and sadness and interiority. I, I mean, you know, I'm not a big fan, but you know, people like Harold Bloom, uh, the famous critic, and his idea of the invention of the human, argues that it, it's 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 Hamlet. Uh, sorry. It's Shakespeare's plays that have helped articulate so much of what Western characters imagine is our interior world, is our psychology. Um, to die, to sleep, no more. And by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. So with sleep, we can end... flesh so this is this is flesh shocks can we end them by death tis a consummation devoutly to be wished let's 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 wish for this to be over the thought process continues okay he goes let's 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 this is something we should want which is the end of pain and now his thought goes, and here's really for me, the wonder of the speech is um, look at the skin of his thought. Okay, so if we die, we sleep, and if we sleep, it's it. We might dream. Uh oh, uh oh, rub, the problem. That's the problem. What? Well, if I dream, if death is a kind of sleep. There's a danger that it could be, we could dream. And in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled, this is such good, beautiful, shuffled off this mortal coil, shuffled, like danced off <laughs> almost uh, this, this, this life. Shuffled makes me think of dancing off the stage of life. Um, we have to pause because... Um, there's the respect that makes calamity of so long a life. For who would... Because he goes, why, who would... Life's, life's torments... Why would you live through them? 
this list. Uh, the wrongs of the oppressor, the proud man's contumely, I don't know what that is, uh, disprised love, um, lo the delay of law, oh, that's an interesting one, uh, the insolence of office, the spurns and the patient, all of these are the things that life, and um, when you could, why, why do this when you could end it? with a bare blade. Why do that? Earlier, he, you know, he talked about in, uh, of this, he wants his flesh to melt. And if only it wasn't against God's laws. Now it's not about God's laws he's really fixated on, but this idea that suicide isn't really the end. Who would these fartals bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, why would we, why would we labor? Why labor? Why work? Spoken like a true aristocrat. Um, but, but the fear of something after death. Now this is weird. The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. This is a bit strange, isn't it? Because he's just met someone has returned. How has he forgotten this? How? I, it's, it's a weird hiccup. I don't know what is going on there. Because, but he doesn't know what happens after death, I guess. He doesn't really know. I mean, he is this a devil? Is this an alien? He doesn't know. Um, it, it confuses us. And because of that, it makes us bear those ills we have, then fly to others that we know not of. We know not of. Worse may be out there. There may be actually worse there. So because of this, conscience makes us cowards, conscious thinking about our inner moral compass makes us cowards because we're afraid of what we don't know. And thus the native hue of resolution, decision is sicklied over, resolution is made sick by thought. So we have to worry, are we making the right choice? And enterprises of great pith and moment with the, this regard, their currents turn away and lose the name of action. And enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard, their currents turn away and lose thinking loses action. We are... Uh, stunted, trapped, frozen. We're afraid. We're afraid of death. And uh, if we weren't afraid of death, why would anyone be alive? Just get rid of it. Die. Um, but I don't know which one I should do. And because I'm thinking about it, I don't act and the thought process kind of is the problem and uh, <laughs> um, there is a trick and problem that I'm interested in lately which is is this actually a soliloquy Ophelia's on stage um, does she overhear him say this do Polonius and Claudius over here say this? Is this something he says out loud? If he does, um, if others are watching, are others watching or listening? If so, how would it change the speech? Is this the most alone private thought or is this yet another performance? We don't know and we can't say for certain, but it's something worth thinking about, perhaps.